Hello and welcome to Stir Crazy Art Class with Gerald Savine, lesson number 25, pod, projects number 8. Today we're going to be looking at um, drawing bottles, but also more importantly we're learning about proportioning. And again I'll describe to you how to do it. I will be at the different angles of what you are, but I hope you will be able to understand um, what I'm trying to demonstrate to you. Okay, so if we can move back a little bit I can show you first of all about proportioning. Um, proportioning is to do with comparing one thing to, uh, to another. I could do the drawing of these bottles very small or I could do them on the side of the building. As long as they all related exactly the same to each other as they do at the moment they will be in proportion and I'm going to show you how to do this. Now taking the first bottle which is this one here standing by itself um, now you won't better see exactly what I'm doing, but I hope you can understand my dis description here. I'm going to hold a pencil. You've seen artists doing this with their wobbling around with paint brushes and pencils and things, looking at things with one eye closed. Um, that's how they're looking at things and prepare, comparing one thing against another. It's not about feet and inches and centimetres and metres. Um, it's the th one thing against another. Now here I want to know the size of the bottle compared to its width. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold a pencil in my four fingers, leaving my thumb able to move up and down. Now you won't see this exactly as I'm seeing it. You need to keep the pencils horizontal and vertical when you do this, so nice and upright. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this side, now you won't see it exactly as I'm seeing it, but against the, this side of the bottle, and I'm going to move my thumb along until I get to the other side of the bottle. So that is one. So if I now turn this down and put my thumb thumb down to the bottom of the bottle, look where the top of the pencil is, that is one, up, that is two, looking again at the top of the pencil, up is three, and I can see that the bottle is just a bit more than three. So I know that the bottle is slightly more than three times the width. Now bottles, because they're cylinders, they're round, um, in theory they could fit within an oblong. So if you were to draw an oblong, that was three and a little bit more than the width of these two lines, then you know the bottle would fit within that, in that space. Um, again, because if you were to chop a bottle in half, one side would be exactly the same as the other. So if you can draw a straight line down the middle of that oblong, you need to make this side exactly the same as that side. So that's the start where we're going now. Now the first thing we need to know is where does the shoulder of the bottle start and where it goes up to the neck. And also we need to know how wide the neck is compared to the width. So here we will take the, do the same thing again. We'll measure across the, the neck of the bottle and then we can compare it to the width of the bottle. One, two, three. So uh, the, the neck of the bottle is give or take um, a third of the width of the bottle. So you can draw two straight lines down. Then we need to know where the shoulder starts. Now you might notice also the shoulder in this bottle is different to these ones here. So what we need to do is to find out where the shoulder starts. Now you might notice that the shoulder starts at the top of the label. So we need to know where, how far up the label is. So again, we take the width of the bottle, count it up and see where it comes to. Um, in this case, it's about one and a half times. So that's marked there. Now you make it look at the shape. Can you see the oval coming through the, of the label going through there? Try and come round and see if you can get the shape looking right. Then you can then curve your drawing up and up both sides. Now also what you can do at this stage, if you turn your picture upside down, you can make sure that the two sides balance. It's not so obvious when you're working the other way up, but when you turn it upside down you can start seeing wrong. Look, can you see look here originally at one point I did land it up going over there. You then need to repeat, repeat this exercise of measuring that to the bottom of the label to the bottom of the uh, bottle across the width so you know how high up that comes and this, um, the same goes here. 
Now then, the other thing that comes into this is perspective. Because I, here, I'm, um, I'm quite lower than th the two bottles at the back compared to this one. This one, I can just see the top of it. This is fairly narrow, but I don't know if you can appreciate how much curvier that is, and the same at the bottom here as well. If you look at these ones um, on my drawing, again, there won't be how you can see them, but the top of this bottle is above my eye level, so a bit of perspective going on. So that's going to, the top of the bottle is going to curve that way. This one's still just above the eye level, but again here, the labels. Can you see, I think it's not so obvious on that one because that one's a quite a dark um, uh, glass, but look at the difference between that and that and that. As they've come down below my eye level, the curves of the ovals have got greater and greater. Um, so again, that's how perspective is working. So a circle, as it goes down away from your eyes, either up or down, will become greater and greater. So an oval gradually gets wider and wider. The other important thing here is that ovals do not come to a point. Do not do an oval like that. They always have a little curve in them because they are actually circles you're seeing at an angle. So that's just a little hint as far as that goes. If you can find you've got three, three wine bottles or two if, not, if you haven't got three or any bottles really, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you can place them, um, now again, because the, bot the bottom of the bottles are below my eye level, can you see it has the appearance that the bottoms of the bottles are going up the page. Again, that's telling you that you're looking down on the bottoms of the bottles. So as things go away from you in perspective, even if they're all on the same level, they gradually seem to go higher and higher up the page of your drawing. Going through, continuing through, measuring that against how far this one is across, so you know where to start your drawing, your composition into that, and then into that direction. And again, I deliberately overlapped the third bottle. And if you do this right with allowing a space in between the bottles, as you look at them yourself, you'll also find you've got what we call a negative space shape. Can you see the shape that's being created there in between? The bottles and the same here that helps you get things in the right place and the right sizes you can see how this curve here goes up makes interesting shapes actually as well um, and again here so there's so much going on when you look and see things how they sit in their surroundings create shapes so you've got the sizes you can compare this to this to this by doing this. Again, be careful when you're doing this, by the way, make sure you don't bend your elbow because if you do, your measurements will go, go out wrong. So just take your time. Again, to save a lot of messing about, as you can see, I've already pre-drawn this. But look and look and look. I can, I'm now looking at this and I can see there's a few things not quite right. But can you also notice, when you look, that's there. And I can look across and I can see where that comes in relation to the bottle there. Do the same there. I can see where the bottom of the bottle comes in relation. Looking across here, I can see where the labels come in relationship to each other. Getting those spaces right helps you get the, the, the drawing and things right. So um, it's a fairly short um, uh, demonstration. Uh, but take your time and say if you've only got but make sure they're round bottles as well don't you know don't, don't want a plastic milk bottle these days the big ones tend to be shaped find bottles that are circular and just think about how they fit in to um, a, an oblong and how they relate to each other and say if you can get I wouldn't wouldn't go for more than um, three two would be fine and if you're really adventurous you can always 
start painting it as well. Um, I won't go into that today, um, but uh, um, hopefully that just again learning to look, learning about proportioning. Again, if you were out in the countryside or so looking at houses and things, you might want to do this and compare the the, the width of one house against another. Uh, you might want to compare the width against the height of the house or whatever. How are trees that are around buildings looking to see how they relate to each other? And look at the proportioning of them. You can even even if you had a big tree next to a house, you could do the same thing. You can measure right across the, all the leaves on the on the tree and compare it to the size of the house or compare it to the height of the house. It's a very good way of looking at things and take it part of taking time looking at um, what you're going to paint or draw but take your time again as I've said earlier on one of the big advantages about doing classes like this is you're learning to look and your eyes will open up better to the world around you you'll start seeing things that you've never noticed before um, and it's all about looking and looking and looking and comparing one thing against another. So again, it's not about feet and inches, and centimetres and metres, it's of the proportion of one thing against another. All right, so I hope you find that a help, and next time we should be getting on to doing a new painting, but we'll talk about that another time. Okay, look forward to seeing you again.